All right. How is everybody today? Not too bad. All right. So today we're going to talk a little bit about motors. Um, so there are six main types of motors that I want to cover, and I'm just going to spend a little bit of time on each one. And then at the end, um, there's going to be a short quiz online about motors. Hey, um, basically you're just going to, it's going to have the different motor types listed and then you're just going to identify the characteristics of each one. Okay. So, um, I think that this should be a relatively, uh, short, um, uh, class today, but I think that that's just fine. Next week is spring break and I think we're all ready for that. So yeah. So that's the plan. All right. So let's dive right in. So the first type of motor that I want to talk about is called a brushed DC motor. This was, um, this is one of the simplest types of motors that there is. Um, so basically all motors are, um, all electric motors are based around permanent magnets and electromagnets. And they're used in um, different configurations depending on the type of motor that you have. But um, that's, that's the basic, um, basically those, those two things are used together. And then um, depending on what configuration you have, um, that, that tells you what kind of motor you have. So um, the first type of motor is a brushed DC motor. So um, this is really the, yeah, basically the simplest type of motor that you can have. Um, and what happens with this motor is you've got a metal enclosure and around the outside of the metal enclosure, you have permanent magnets. And these permanent magnets are just what they sound like. They're magnets that are permanently on, they're, they're permanently activated and they always have the same polarity. So maybe you have north and south like that and a north and a south pole like that. Okay. Um, this is somewhat of a simplified diagram in a real motor. You'd have more of these magnets around the outside, but, but for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to show two magnets here. Now this mag, this motor would be turning a, an axle that would be sticking out of the board like this. And so in order to turn that axle, what happens is that this motor has a metal core that's attached to the axle. And there is a wire that is wrapped around this metal core. Kind of like this. Okay. And what happens is that we put electricity into this wire. And when we put electricity into this wire, we create an electromagnet. So that electromagnet has maybe a south pole up there and a north pole down there. The polarity of that magnet would actually depend on which way you push that electricity through the wire. So if you push the electricity through one way, you'd have a south pole there and a north pole at the bottom. If you push the electricity in the opposite direction, the poles would reverse. So you'd have a north pole up there and a south pole down there. But for right now, we're pushing the electricity in this direction. So we have a south pole there and a north pole there. So now we have a south magnetic pole next to a south magnetic pole. And with magnets, similar poles repel each other. So that means that you're creating a force here. So this south pole and this south pole push each other apart, which pushes the magnet around that way. And similarly down here, we have a north pole close to a north pole. They repel each other. So that pushes this magnet around that way. So together, these two forces are acting to rotate this axle. Okay. And that's what we want. So that's how this, um, brushed DC motor starts to rotate. If we were to look at this motor just, um, a few moments later, 
what we would see is we would still have the permanent magnet on the top and on the bottom. Um, but now the, uh, the axle and this electromagnet would have rotated a bit. So now it would be kind of in this orientation. So we would still be pushing electricity through this wire. And um, so we would still have an electromagnet here. But since this wire has rotated, now the poles will have rotated also. So we would have this north pole would be up here, and the south pole would be down there. And now we have opposite magnetic poles close to each other, and opposite magnetic poles attract each other. So what happens here is that um, this magnetic north is attracted to the south, this south is attracted to the north, and we keep this, um, that, that causes this bar to keep on rotating. Okay? But we're very close to a problem. We're close to getting stuck because if this um, north magnetic pole gets right next to the south magnetic pole, those two things are attracting each other and they're just going to want to hold on to each other. It's not going to want to keep on rotating. And vice versa, down here the south would get close to the north and get stuck. So how, um, how could we get ourselves out of that situation? Uh, yeah, we could, I mean, there would be, yeah, a real motor would have more magnets, but you could still have the same situation. Um, you know, the, the North Pole could still get close to a, a South Pole and get stuck. Yeah, yeah. So this is an electromagnet in the, the middle here, and that's controlled by the electric current that's going through it. So if we, if we stop that current, then this middle bar ceases to be, a magnet, and so then it would no longer be stuck. So, so that way it could maybe glide past that point um, a little bit, and then, um, and then it would be kind of in this situation where we'd still have the north and south poles of our permanent magnets here, and now our Electromagnet has maybe glided past a little bit. But we don't want our, our electromagnet to be gliding for very long because then the motor wouldn't have anything pushing it and it would probably slow down and stop. So, um, so what could we do at this point? What's that? Direction of yeah, exactly. We could we could push that electricity back through, but now we could push it in the opposite direction. Remember, we said that the the direction of the current determines the direction of those poles. So if we reverse the direction of the current, we reverse the location of those poles. So then we could make the um, the south pole up here and the north pole down there, and then we're kind of back to where we started. The south poles are close to each other and they're repelling, which is pushing the bar that way, and the north poles are close to each other and repelling, so that's pushing that around. So that way, the, we cause the motor to keep on spinning in that same direction, which is what we want. We keep on turning that axle so we can drive our car or run our machine or whatever we want, okay? So, so this is the basic operation of this brushed DC motor. We, have this electromagnet in the middle. We push electricity through it to create an, um, a north and a south pole. Those poles are repelled by our permanent magnet and they keep on going um, until at some point we have to reverse the direction of that electricity flow so that um, it keeps turning in the same, same direction. So, um, you might notice a problem with this, though. And the, the problem 
you might see is that we got these wires going to this electromagnet in the middle, but this electromagnet is turning and turning and turning. So if we had those wires connected you know, permanently to a power source, they'd get all twisted up real fast, and then you get a big knot and your motor wouldn't be able to spin anymore. So we need some way of getting that electricity to this electromagnet without um, getting those wires all twisted up. So the way that people have come up with to, to deal with this problem is that they, they have this axle. This is like a close-up picture of the axle. And on one side of the axle, they have a, um, a piece of metal And that is connected to one of the windings on our electromagnet. So, so this piece of metal would be connected to uh, one of these windings. Okay, and then on the other side of the axle, there is a different piece of metal and this other piece of metal is connected to the other end of the winding. So then that would go down there, something like that, okay? So um, and then what happens is that you have these these metal or the, these thing, um, electrical contacts that reach in and, and touch the axle. And these electrical contacts then pass the electricity from the power source to this uh, piece of metal on the axle. And then from there it goes to the winding and, and powers the electromagnet. Okay? And these electrical contacts that are touching the axle, they used to be made out of very fine fingers of metal that were essentially little wire brushes, metal brushes. So that's where the name brushed DC motor comes from. Um, the, these little electrical brushes that pass the electricity to the axle, okay? Um, and then DC stands for direct current. That means that we, we apply just a constant voltage to these wires. Um, and then the, the whole direction of the electricity is controlled by which of these bar, which of these, these faces of the axle is touching which brush. So um, as long as the the top brush is touching the blue part and the bottom brush is touching the green part, the electricity will go through in one direction. But as the electromagnet rotates, um, eventually the blue part will come in t contact with the bottom brush and the green part will come in contact with the top brush and then the direction of the electricity will flip around. Okay, so, so this control of the direction of the electricity is entirely mechanical. It's, it's just based on which part of the axle is touching which brush, okay? Um, so, like I said, these brushes were originally made out of very fine um, fingers of, of metal, like a little, a little wire brush, but people found that that was unreliable and that it, those, those fingers tended to wear out pretty quickly and they needed to be replaced or maintained. So, um, so, Eventually, people decided that they could still use the same mechanism, but they could use a different type of contact that was made out of carbon, like a little carbon pad that pushes on the side of the axle. And that's how they could transfer the electricity. Um, and these things are still called brushes, even though they, they don't resemble a brush in any way. But I have an example of a brushed DC motor here that you can all take a look at. I'll pass this around in just a minute. But um, what you can notice, if you look in through the, the side of the motor here, you can, you can see the, the axle in the middle 
And you can see that it's got um, different uh, sections of metal there. And each one of those represents one of the um, connections to the electrical windings. And you can see that on this motor, I think that there are, it looks like um, about eight um, of those brushes, okay? So instead of just having two, or eight of those little contact pads. So instead of having just two contact pads like we're showing here, there are actually eight of them, okay? Um, and then on the sides of the motor, there are these, um, these, these brushes. They are actually the carbon pads, like I said, and they're, they're held onto the axle with some springs. So even as the, ca the carbon wears down over time, the springs push those pads closer to the axle and so they, they remain in contact, okay? So, um, and, and the wires that are sticking out of the back of the motor are attached to those carbon pads to transfer the electricity that way, okay? Um, and then if you look inside the motor, you can see the electrical windings that are the windings around the, um, that create the electromagnet. And then we can't really see the permanent magnets. Well, yeah, maybe, yeah, you can, you can kind of see the permanent magnets around the side of the housing as well, okay? So I'll pass that around, you can take a look. Um, so <clears throat> these brushed DC motors have some advantages. Primarily, they are relatively simple um, because, like I said, the direction of the electricity flow and everything else is all controlled mechanically. It's just by the position of the brush relative to these um, metal contacts, okay? So, so you don't have to have any computer chips or anything in here to do any sort of controlling. So that's um, relatively simple. And simple also means inexpensive. So um, these, these motors are relatively cheap to produce. So that's a good thing also. But there are some drawbacks. And most of those drawbacks come in this, this section in the middle of the motor where you have the motor um, brushes contacting the axle because those are, those are not great connections. So, so that means a couple things. First of all, these brushes do wear out over time and they have to be replaced eventually. Also, um, the electrical connection there is not the greatest. There's some, there's some resistance there. And so that, um, that means that you lose power. Essentially, some of your electricity is just turned into heat when it goes through that resistance instead of turning the motor like you want. So it's, it's less, it's not that efficient. And also, um, these brushes can sometimes lead to sparking. So, so I brought in this um, drill here. I'm gonna turn off the lights for just a second so we can see this better. So when I run this and then stop it, we should see a little spark inside there. Let's see if we see it. You see that? Yeah. So, so that's because this is a, a brushed DC motor inside there, and and when um, when the drill stops, um, you 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 can have some gap between the brush and the motor itself, or um, you also get a lot of um, voltage building up here, and and that voltage needs some place to go, so it creates these these sparks. Okay. So sparks are inefficient and they can also be dangerous, especially if you're in an area with a lot of flammable uh, material like, like gasoline or things like that. So, so those are some downsides. So again, the, the positive things about brush DC motors are that they are um, simple and therefore inexpensive, but the downside is that they're inefficient, um, they wear out, and they can have those dangerous sparks. So that's a little bit about brushed DC motors. So any questions about that? Okay. Um, so, so then let's go on to brushless DC motors. Yes. About this uh, motor. Uh-huh. Uh, wires are 
uncovered or something? No, no, they're not actually uncovered. It looks like it looks like they're uncovered. They don't have like a big plastic um, insulation layer around them, but they've got a very thin layer of insulation that's essentially painted on. So it's um, it's yeah, it's it's just a very thin coating that's like sprayed on there, so that it, it still looks like a copper wire, but it's actually insulated from the other things around it. Yeah, but you're right. If it was just copper wire, yeah, all wound together, it would be shorted out. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Okay. Um, all right. So then let's let's talk about a brushless DC motor. So the, this brushless DC motor seeks to um, fix some of those problems that we had with the brushed motor. So that, that inefficiency that we were talking about and those sparks, um, we wanted to fix some of those things. And so a, brushed, a brushless motor um, fixes some of those issues. So a brushless DC motor, um, it again it uses permanent magnets and electromagnets, but the position of the two types of magnets are reversed. So with a brushless DC motor, you still have this metal frame around the outside, but um, now you have electromagnets on the outside of your frame and you have um, a permanent magnet in the middle. So the, the basic idea here is exactly the same. So you put electricity through these uh, electromagnets so that you have a north pole close to the north pole and a south pole close to the south pole of the permanent magnet. And that, that pushes the um, permanent magnet around. And then a short while later, the, the permanent magnet has rotated. So now the, um, the north pole is down here, the south pole is there. Um, and at this point, you are still pushing the electricity through the electromagnets in the same direction. Um, so you have north pole there and a south pole there. Um, and then, you know, when, when the permanent south gets close to the electromagnetic north, um, you, you reverse the directions of the electricity in your electromagnets this time. Well, still. Um, and then that continues to push the axle around in the same direction. So, um, so yeah, so you would reverse the, the direction of the electricity flow through these electromagnets so that now you have a north down there and a, a south pole um, there. And so it continues to push the axle around in the same direction. Okay, so the basic idea is the same, but as you can see, the, the electromagnets are around the outside of your motor now, so that has some advantages. So that means that these electromagnets can be permanently attached to your power supply because they're not turning. So, um, so they're not, those wires are not going to get wrapped up in anything. 
Um, and since there can be a, a more permanent connection, you don't get that sparking and you don't have that um, loss of efficiency that you did while putting the electricity through the brushes. So those are all good things. But you can see that um, these, the direction of the electricity through these electromagnets now has to be controlled by, by some external um, computer. So essentially you have to have a sensor on this um, inner axle to tell where you are and then that sensor has to be attached to the um, attached to the computer and then the computer has to actually read the data from that sensor and switch the direction to these um, electromagnets. So, so there's more complexity there. Okay? But you get more efficiency um, and less wearing out. So if you are looking for um, a system that's more efficient and um, that doesn't have sparking and, and doesn't wear out as much, you can um, use a brushless motor but they, they just generally cost a little bit more because they're more complicated, okay? But a lot of, a lot of uh, tools that you get at the hardware store and other things are going to brushless DC motors now. So if you were to buy a drill like this today, it's probably um, a brushless motor inside. It's a little more expensive than this one, but um, it doesn't have that sparking and stuff like that, okay? So, um, so, so that's a little bit about brushless. DC motors. Again, they're called DC because we, we provide direct current electricity. In other words, the electric voltage just stays the same. So, yeah. So they have a sensor inside? Yeah, so they, they'll have a sensor on the axle to tell the motor, or to tell the little controller where the axle is. Yeah. What kind of sensor? Um, so, um, a lot of times it is something called a Hall effect sensor, which detects um, um, where a magnet is. So the, the Hall effect actually might be mounted on the outside here, and it could detect when the permanent magnet gets close to it, or something like that. Um, so that's a little bit about brushless DC motors. So questions about that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, some some small chip on the motor or in the motor somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Okay. Um, all right. So then, um, let's go on and talk a little bit about servo motors. So, a servo motor is basically a a regular motor plus a little computer brain. Okay, so we've used servo motors in our class. We, we talked about these a little bit when we um, talked about, um, you know, controlling them for our robots. So a servo motor can be um, really either a brush DC or a brushless DC motor. Um, that has a little computer brain attached to it and we send signals to that computer brain and then that computer brain um, controls the electricity that goes to the motor. Okay, so we can send those, um, we can send the motor commands to go faster or slower. There are other types of motors where we can send it a command to go to a certain position um, and hold at that position. So. In any case, a servo motor is just a regular motor plus a little computer brain in there. Okay. Now, a, a linear servo motor um, is kind of an interesting thing. Basically, it's, it's kind of like a, a regular motor, a regular um, brushless DC motor that has been kind of unwound and flattened out, okay? So, um, so, a linear servo um, is basically 
you have some sort of a, a track that a little cart can ride on. So this, this cart rides along this track. It could be like a little uh, rail or something like that. And then um, underneath this rail, you have a um, magnet. So you've got a north pole and a south pole on this magnet. And then um, underneath the track, you have electromagnets. So these are electromagnets. They're, they're attached to wires. And these are, these are all spaced out. And so what happens is that um, a computer will send signals and, and will turn these electromagnets on and off in order to make this cart move back and forth along this track. So for instance, if we wanted to move the cart to the right, we would, um, we would turn these electromagnets on maybe so that you have a north pole there and then a, um, a south pole on the top of that one and a north pole down there and then you know, a north pole there and south down there. You know, and then there would be more of these electromagnets along here. But so, so what this would do is that this would, um, you know, the North Pole would repel the North Pole and push it that way. The South Poles would repel each other. And then the North Pole would attract the South Pole and, and pull this cart along. Okay, so, um, so this, and then when this, this cart moves just a little bit further and, you know, the South Pole is close to the North Pole here and the North Pole is close to the South Pole, then um, the, the little computer controller would sense that and would reverse the direction of the electricity going through these um, magnets, and so that would keep the cart sliding along even farther, okay? So it's the same basic idea as a, a brushless motor, but it, instead of being around in a circle, it's been kind of unwound and flattened out, okay? Um, and so these types of motors, um, they can be used in many different applications. In particular, this is um, used in some roller coaster rides to kind of launch your, your cart down the track. Um, so these can be very powerful and they can, they can be very long also. So um, they can be very useful if you need linear motion, okay? So that's a little bit about linear servos. So, any questions about that? Okay. Um, so then, um, that that brings us to the um, next type of motor, which is a a stepper motor. Um, so. Um, So a stepper motor um, it's very similar to uh, a brushless DC motor, but it doesn't have any sort of sensing um, to tell where the, the motor currently is. Um, so what it has um, instead is it just has, so it has a, a permanent magnet in the middle just like a brushless motor. Um, and then um, around the outside, it has many, many um, electromagnets. 
So what happens is that with the, the stepper motors, you control the motor by sending little pulses to each one of these electromagnets. So um, if you want the motor to stay in this position, you send a pulse um, to this magnet, and it holds the motor right there. If you want it to move a little bit to the next spot, you, you send a pulse to the, the, next, um, the next magnet. And so then the motor stays there. Um, and since it's just a small distance away, you kind of have to assume that the, the magnet actually makes that movement. And then if you want to move it a little bit farther, you just send a pulse to the next magnet, and it kind of moves that way. So it goes in these little tiny steps. That's why we call it a stepper motor. Okay, and we, we control it by sending pulses to these different um, electromagnets. And usually they come in um, groups of, of three or four electromagnets. So you, you step from one to the second to the third to the fourth, and then um, this, this next one would be um, the same winding as this one over here. So if you wanted to keep it going, you would just send another pulse to the, the first um, wire, and then that would move it, move it on that way. So you, you step it bit by bit around the circle and make it go where you want. So um, this has some advantages. It's, since it doesn't have any sensor or um, computer control on here, it's less expensive. But um, it, the drawback is that you can't be sure where this motor magnet actually is. So you just have to kind of assume that it's made the movements that you told it to. You can't really tell for sure. So um, a lot of, a lot of um, 3D printers use stepper motors. So this, and this is an example of a stepper motor right here. And it's, on, it's moving a little um, head back and forth, kind of like you might see a printing head moving back and forth on a 3D printer. Okay. Um, and this has a cable. It's got four wires. So there's three magnets and a ground wire there. So this, so you would, this has sets of three electromagnets around the outside. And you would move this motor by sending pulses um, to each of the electromagnets in turn. Okay. So, um, so I can pass that around. So. Um, so stepper motors generally have relatively strong uh, hold at each one of these spots. Um, and they need that in order to really make sure that that permanent magnet moves. Um, so that's good. But they are kind of discrete spots. So you get sort of these little steppy motions. So that, that um, can be a drawback if you need really smooth motion. Okay. Um, so, so that's what's going on with stepper motors. So any questions about that? There's no feedback. Right, there's no feedback, exactly. Yeah, so, right, so that's, that's an excellent point. So, so feedback is the process of getting a, a sensing where you are or, or sensing something and then um, sending that signal back, feeding it back to a controller and then making decisions, having the controller make decisions based on that. Um, so that's what happens with servo motors. That's called a feedback control. Um, but stepper motors have no feedback. Yeah. So yeah, any other questions about stepper motors? OK. Um, so then the la that brings us to the last motor here, which is an AC motor. And these are the weirdest motors, I think. Because these motors have no permanent magnets in them. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty strange. So if we're looking at these from the end on, like we have been, um, they, they have electromagnet windings around the outside, like we've talked about before. And then in the middle, 
they have this really weird um, this really weird arrangement. So if we were looking at it from the end, it would look kind of like that. So it would be more centered. And, and really, it would be more like, like that. If we looked at this thing from the side, or kind of from a, a 3D point of view, I'm going to try and draw it here. Um, it would look something like this. So, it's, it's this, this arrangement where you have like a, a top rim and a bottom rim that are connected by metal spokes. So, um, people call this thing the squirrel cage. It's kind of like a hamster wheel, really, um, but kind of tilted up on its on its end. Um, so, so if we were to draw kind of a, a simplified version of this, um, it would look without quite so many spokes. It might look more like this. So, so um, what happens is that when, when we create an electromagnetic field here around the, um, the outside of our motor, that causes, so there's this weird relationship between electricity and magnetism. So if you have electricity going around in a circle, that creates a magnetic field. That's what an electromagnet is. But also, a, a magnetic field that's moving by a, um, a circle of wire will create um, a current of electricity going around that wire, that circle of wire. Um, and so that's, that's what happens with these AC motors. So, um, the, <clears throat> the AC electricity goes into these wires and that, that causes a magnetic field. Basically, it's creating, yeah, it's making electromagnets and that causes an electromagnetic field. And what happens is that it, it moves the pole around the outside of this um, this motor. So, like at first, you'd have a north pole there, but then just a little while later, the north pole would come over here, and then a little while later, the north pole would be down here, and then a little while later, it would be over there. So essentially, so you're creating this this moving magnetic field that that goes around the outside of this motor. Okay, so this magnetic field goes around the outside of this motor. And so when it goes around that motor, it it goes it moves past these um, these sections of this squirrel cage. Okay, so, and when it moves past the section of this squirrel cage, it creates an electric current that, that flows around that section of the, the squirrel cage. And that electric current flowing around that section then creates its own magnetic field. So then 
so then that creates like a, a, a magnetic north facing out, say, and a south facing in towards the middle of this uh, squirrel cage, okay? So, and then that magnetic field is attracted to the magnetic field in these electromagnets, and so then that causes the squirrel cage to start to rotate. So then that, that causes this whole thing to, um, to start to rotate. So, so without having any permanent magnets anywhere in this motor, we, we use this electromagnetic field on the outside to create an electromagnetic field on the inside, and then that causes the, um, the motor to rotate, okay? So, um, so it's this, this really sort of unusual and, and hard to picture phenomenon, but it, it works really well. And these are actually very efficient motors. Um, and so these are the types of motors that are used in, uh, in Tesla cars and, and a lot of electric vehicles, okay? Because they're, they're very efficient um, and they can provide a lot of power, okay? So, um, so it's kind of this weird, this weird idea, but it works really well, okay? Um, so, so that's AC motors. So any questions about that? Okay, so that's really all I wanted to say about motors. We talked about these six different types of motors. So, um, so on Canvas there is a short quiz that deals with um, the different types of motors and just has you identify um, which type of motor is which. So um, I'm gonna take attendance here and then you can take a minute to uh, go through that. I don't think it should take very long, um, but feel free to ask me if you have any questions, okay?